we are moving forward to our next presentation and our next presenter is Seswata Neg. He is Global Category Procurement Manager from Perfetti Van Mellon. Mele. Okay, so Seswata is a Senior Global Category Manager in Perfetti Van Mellon, responsible for global procurement strategy for paper and plastic based out of Singapore. And uh, uh, with a past graduation in uh, packaging from Indian Institute of Packaging and Graduate Diploma in Materials Management from IIM Mumbai, he is one of the few techno commercial global packaging procurement professional uh, with 25 plus years of rich experience with FMCG Global Fortune uh, 500 space. So he will be sharing his expertise with us on post-pandemic digitalization, agile buying in packaging procurement. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Seswata. Hi Seswata, how are you? Hi, thank you. Are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you properly. Okay, thanks. Okay, so Mr. Swita, thank you so much for joining us. It's really an honor for us to have you here and uh, we are very excited to uh, listen to your presentation. So you can, uh, I can perfectly see your slides. So good luck stage is all yours now. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to our uh, Agile Supply Chain uh, presentation. So by seeing the theme of the innovative people here because uh, the, the 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 this 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 stage is actually the forum is all about innovation so i expect that people are really innovative and uh, i would like to share uh, a glimpse on agile supply chain and uh, try to try to try to excite you you all in this domain for the next 30 minutes so first of all, welcome to my presentation. So in this, uh, in this presentation, uh, we will discuss about our pandemic challenges, agile processes, how do we building resilience, agile sourcing and responsive sourcing. So what are the pandemic challenges? I mean, in the last uh, almost uh, more than two years, we are facing this issue. And this is impacting not only uh, every, every day's work of us, but it is impacting the whole supply chain globally. And uh, in my 25 years plus experience, I haven't seen, and many of, many of you uh, may not have seen this kind of uh, impact in, the, in, in supply chain. So everything, everything is on fire, right? Starting from oil to all commodities is actually going through the roof. And it, 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 it reached in such a vulnerable uh, stage that it is, it is really, really uh, unbearable to some extent. In some cases, we have seen that people are really uh, closing their establishment in few cases. So what are those challenges? So as you can see from the slides, uh, we are talking about, first of all, it's a restricted trade flow and why it has happened because of the congestion of the ports, what we have learned from 2020 onwards, the container shortage, and this is impacting our trade flow from Asia to the matured West countries. So virtually in this pandemic, the world is divided into two respective zones. So previously we used to um, get open trade from east to west but due to this constraint now trade flow is not as frequent as from east to west mm -hmm. however west to east is still possible and we have seen some of the um, some of the trade is still happening in a in a good way from us to to asian countries so east to west is largely impacted by this then the second point on this is energy and um, you know, this is this is in the last six to eight months has impacted everybody's life uh, in 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 all way. So we have seen the energy price actually going through the roof. Oil is 110 plus. Um, we have shortages of truck drivers. We have shortages of trucks also uh, due to the global chips shortage. We have lack of workers. So in in fact, it is impacting us because we we now with those impacts we are seeing raw material price surge in the industry. The third point in this space is 
we have actually no mobility. So people were able to go from one place to another place quite, uh, you know, you know, we were frequently frequent travelers. I mean, many of us in this uh, room is actually global, regional, um, you know, supply chain uh, folks, or maybe your responsibility in, in other domain, you may be supply chain, R&D or whatever, whatever is your uh, field is. But the mobility was, was there, but currently we lo lost all the mobilities. So if we lost mobilities, then there is no possible supply visit, no face-to-face -face negotiation, which is happening, no innovation workshop. And this is actually limiting our possible innovation and negotiation possibility in a, in a large extent. The fourth thing is the capacity losses. We have seen in the last one year, the closer in China paper mills on sustainability angle. Uh, we have also seen in the US, some of the machine closers, weather related shorts, raw material shortages, cyber attacks to the waste rock. And in fact, if you see from the right side of the screen, it means raw material price surge, raw material shortages, which is impacting our supply chain. So for this, from a strategic standpoint, we can see we need an agile, responsive, resilient supply chain at the end of the day. So this is the key message to the forum and to, to, I mean, this is a key message within many of our industry that we need to build something, our supply chain in this line. Moving on. So what are these agile processes? If you just noticed from our last slides, we are talking about building resilience. We are talking about agile sourcing. We are talking about responsiveness. And how do I build all these things? Uh, in our supply chain system will be the topic for the next uh, 20 minutes. So building resilience. Risk is a primary uh, issue here, challenge here. We are losing innovation, so we need to get more and more innovation in this space um, to mitigate all the challenges what we have speak, uh, in the in, in earlier slides. We talk about some kind of digitalization on control, like intelligent mold assets management. On agile sourcing, we talk about supplier scouting. Now, as we can see that, uh, you know, major, many major risks on the suppliers. So we cannot rely on just one or two suppliers, okay? Uh, because limited supply base is a threat to our supply consistency. And that is why we need to develop, I mean, to the extent of what is balanced, uh, we need to develop uh, more suppliers to support our supply chain consistency. And that is why we need a supplier scouting. Now with the, with, the, with the limitation of travel and everything, this is something we will talk that how we can do it as I way. Um, now we are also speaking about, you know, no direct negotiation, how we can get into time pressure and negotiation. That will be the topic of agile sourcing as well. We talk about responsiveness, how fast we can get back to the market, how fast we can, you know, we, we can really get back to the customers. So this is called responsiveness. And the more responsive we are, we are going to build in a large customer basis because you know, as a customer, we, we all need that a company which can respond to my issue as fast as possible. So on the responsive space, we'll talk about instant analysis, how it can happen, and at the end, we talk about supplier relationship management because this is this is a relationship and relationship is key to our success. So how we can maintain those relationship when we have limited uh, limited um, travel and limited interactions as of today. So in in a nutshell, we are talking about agile, responsive, resilient supply chain. That is what is the key of the day. So message remains consistent here as well. So in the next few slides, we are talking about the how we can build resilience in the system in an agile way. So the first topic, what we have seen in our agile process is the risk. Now, risk is something which people really uh, don't look into, I mean, in most of the cases, unless they are having it, right? So we are living with some risks, from a company standpoint, it is actually very important that we assess those risks and we mitigate those risks. I mean, in the previous pandemic, I mean, um, sorry, pre-pandemic stage, we do not have this kind of uh, 
proactiveness in the system. Not all companies, but many companies, what we have seen that they, they may not be having this kind of proactiveness in, in factoring this. Um, so, but this pandemic actually insists us to get into those, those dynamics, okay? We need to look into, into our supply chain to, to see what is our risk and how fast we can get into this, uh, this, this domain is, is also talks about our ability to turn around to mitigate the risk. So as we can see from the challenges above uh, in, in, in earlier slides, that how we can manage the risk agile in an agile way is the key uh, of this slide. So we have different, uh, different um, what I can say, we have different uh, uh, platform uh, exist in, 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 in the, in, in, in globally. Uh, where we can manage risk remotely, um, and how we can manage it, uh, we can we can actually talking about many global platform which is which is existing and which we can use to first of all to define the organization parameter in the system. So we can actually define that um, how how it's all about the guidelines, policies, contracts, and the compliances part. It is up to the company to decide that which is important and which 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 they will focus on. So according to their importance, they will define those guidelines in in in, in that system. And then we also need to collect supplier data, but we need to do it very quickly. So you know, in, if we do not have something um, something robust system in place, we will not be able to do it quickly. I mean. In some cases, we have seen that previously we used to have some finance mechanism that people are really uh, finance people are uh, looking into the credit risk, and also we from a from a R and D or from a supply chain standpoint, we go interact with suppliers. We try to assess assess them uh, no. based on some kind of questionnaires and everything. Hello, Hi. sorry. I'm so sorry uh, for disturbing you, but can you please just. Uh, make your presentation on the presentation view because uh, our attendees are asking for this. Oh, okay, okay. Is it okay because? Yeah, no, it's perfectly all right. Good luck, sorry. Okay, thank you, no problem. Bye. Okay, so uh, we are just trying to make it in a, in, in a, in a different, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes before the pre-pandemic when people are not really using the, using the platforms in uh, in, a, in, a, in a in a desired way then we used to collect the data from a supplier interaction and we used to uh, we, we used to do it uh, you know vis while visiting a supplier or something similar but now with available available platform base we can uh, we can do it in a click okay um, and then once we are gathering all the suppliers data, we can have an automatic, I mean, in, in the same platform, we have automatic analytic tools, which is enabled to give you a dynamic dashboard reporting and control. And when I say dynamic, that means um, is if there is any kind of change that happens in, a, in, the, in that supplier space, uh, the, the, the tool is having ability to assess that because they have the backend linkage with the with with all supplier database and they will be able to report us quickly so we do not have to wait for things to happen and we do not have to wait and watch kind of situation the tool will be able to uh, get all relevant information and they will produce us in a dynamic dashboard so in kind of anything happens in any supplier space be it a credit rating be it some kind of supply discontinuity be it in force majeure on, on those in, in those uh, respective supplier places, you, you will be alerted. And when we have a dynamic dashboard, we can, I mean, we can really, um, really act on those points where we have lacking, we can take a proactive response to all these things, uh, the risk in the system, we can mitigate uh, the risk, um, you know, we can mitigate the risk uh, quite efficiently. So in a nutshell, again, uh, managing this is key to business continuity in this world, and we are trying to build this. And we have, we have, we have many systems available in 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 the in in the in the web world to to implement in your in your um, in your supply chain organization. 
just to give you an example, I think that from a risk uh, tool perspective, we have Aravo, which, which is one of the uh, one of the prominent and major tool used by many of the MNCs, and um, there are possible other small tools. So if anyone is interested, just let me know. I will I'll be able to share those names with you later. So this is all about lists. The second one is how we can manage innovation. So this is interesting for this forum, I would say, because the, you, you all are uh, taking part in this innovation space. So there are many tools available also to, 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 to control, to track, to manage innovation, to also explore collaboration from respective suppliers. Uh, who are your common current suppliers who may be not in your supply base. So these are all collaborative, innovative tools which you can deploy in your organization to really, um, really uh, to get an idea about the current, uh, about the future situation, to get an answer to, to, to any kind of challenge which you can, which you are facing. Uh, from an innovation standpoint, and it may be any any kind of challenge since this is a packaging uh, forum, I can say that uh, you, you, you know that in, in, in specific cases, if you have some challenges in your organization, you can post that challenges using this tool and you can really track it. You can really track it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can form a, you can form a team uh, within using this tool. Uh, both external and internal parties can be invited and uh, you can set the timelines to 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 close that things you you can the the reminder to the respective people are auto so you can get ideas all the respective people who has to take action uh, will get the get, get the auto reminder uh, by by email so you need not to talk to them you just can follow up based on those things so Many tools, many tools available, but uh, I think from a, from, a, uh, from from my understanding, I think I can mention one tool like Innovation Cast, and uh, another tool from, from the US is Idea Work, uh, WIC, Idea Work, which you can try with. So it, 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 it gives us market trends, discovering trends, insights. It gives us ideas about uh, how we can extend our coverage uh, and how we can get ideas in a short span of time. Um, it can also an effective tool to give us automated ranking to all the ideas. So suppose we are posting uh, posting a challenge uh, to to the to external parties and maybe in some cases internal parties and everybody is putting their ideas uh, in, in in response to your challenge. And this tool is having effective uh, effective. Um, effectiveness to, to rank for our quick selection. So you will be able to get an idea uh, post end date of this uh, challenge posting. You'll be able to get an idea. So, okay, these are the criteria what we have defined while we open the, open the challenge to the forum. And these are the respective answer what we have received. So it's a fantastic way of, uh, you know, agility, bringing agility in your innovation, which can be managed in a tool. So digitalized innovation from ideas to value, and it really, really enhanced speed to the market. So moving on, uh, this is all about uh, the mold management. I think uh, many of us uh, who are working in the rigid plastic space is, is dealing with the molds. Uh, it's not only a packaging uh, molds we are talking about, we talk about uh, many companies that um, appliances, home appliances companies, the, the automobiles companies, everybody is managing huge, uh, huge complexity in and around their organization with molds. We have third party vendors, we have real time, um, you know, uh, we, we, we have real challenges in some cases, like for example, I'll give you a simple example from everyday life of yours that uh, suddenly what we have seen that, okay, a particular mold in a, in a, in a specific country is, is actually uh, needs maintenance. And we haven't noticed, neither the supplier noticed nor we noticed. So it is, it may be the only one mold operating for the company. So, you know, because of this issue, our supply chain can be get, get really disrupted. So how can you control that? How can you control that? It's not possible to give and, uh, you know, track uh, molds in, if you are handling global or if you are handling regional 
um, even if in local cases, it's not possible to keep track, uh, you know, without using any kind of process. So we have systems um, in market which can give you a real time visibility. So this system you can use it on your desktop, you can use on your laptop. The only thing uh, it is a it is it is actually a cloud st storage uh, data system, and um, there are two three companies which I know that they have the ability to 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 introduce this system to us. Um, so what do you, what do we need to do? That we need to just uh, uh, put a chip inside the mold, and uh, and and that will be connected automatically to to the folks who are controlling uh, the system. So it will be it will be all all kind of data, the real time data, which uh, link to the control and the and the cost matrix uh, of the organization will be displayed on your desktop, on or your mobile, on or your laptop. So this is a fantastic, uh, you know, it's a fantastic system which can give you control to the whole mold. You will be able to understand that a particular mold, uh, when it is when it needs maintenance, you will be able to understand that uh, whether the mold is stopped, um, you can also control. Suppose in some cases, what, what may happen, I'm not saying that it is happening everywhere, but what may happen, a vendor may be, supplying those same formats um, uh, outside you know uh, i'm talking about it can be used as a counter file message because you will be able to understand that how many component that vendor has manufactured using this mold and how many con um, how many components is getting supplied if there is any surplus uh, which is happening and if the vendor is not having that stock that means he's doing something um, um, uh, at your back so those kind of uh, control is can 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 be only also effectively placed with this system. Fantastic system! It gives a competitive advantage, and I can simply see the details on your desktop for a mode. Now we'll talk about the agile sourcing part of it. So as we can see, we need to develop vendors. Develop vendors can be globally, can be regionally, can be locally as well. So. Since we have limitation in, 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 in different uh, space of travels and everything, uh, I mean, this, this scouting process, which is using the AI and, and machine learning, AI and ML technology, uh, it is able to give you an access. I mean, the moment you, you are really want to develop or uh, a supplier, it, it can be used globally. So the, the process I have described here on screen, so, when you have when when you need to develop a supplier, we just need to give them a brief of what you need exactly, and then the brief will be uh, will be and your keywords your keywords like for example when you were saying like for example microflute, uh, you guys are packaging guys. So I say that if you are in need of a microflute uh, cotton manufacturer. So microflute is your keyword. So you need to specifically tell that, okay, I need some suppliers who is dealing with microflute globally. We can, we can post it uh, globally. So what, what this system does, it will pick up your keywords and it will match that keyword to, the, to their deep sea. And they will be able to find the match very quickly. And as you can see that, uh, you know, it will be giving us a very quick, uh, quick, quick uh, response to our need. So we will be able to get, I mean, in some cases, 12 hours time um, to, to, to get a supplier uh, details. Um, so this is a fantastic tool to, to give you competitive advantage and speak to the market. So digitalize the supplier discovery is an interesting phenomenon which is happening in the market space now. Moving on, this is all about negotiation since I'm in procurement. So this is an interesting subject, but it is impacting the organization bottom line. So it is very, very desirable that how do we move our tactical procurement to strategic procurement? How do we impact those effectiveness of negotiation using different kinds of tools in the market? So this is how, how all about this. I can just briefly dis 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 discuss with you some kind of um, some kind of eat and drink tools what people are using and maybe there are some 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 mechanism we can use also without a tool 
So this is all about negotiation. Everybody may be aware of reverse English auction, which is a very traditional uh, reverse auction, which we can use in e-tendering. And all of this, what I am discussing here is all of this, this is actually using time pressure on a supplier. So this may not be new, new thing, I would say, but how do you analyze your suppliers? How do you get into their brain? And how do you analyze the scenario and apply the right tool is the key, key of everything. So that's what I have just meant, mentioned in, in here. So reverse English auction you can use when there is a competitive scenario, when we have multiple suppliers availability, when the specification is common. A little bit away from that is Japanese auction, when we can use, when the market is difficult, when we have limited or single suppliers, we have specific specification and we may have a preference to a specific suppliers. Dutch auction we can use whenever all similarities with, with, with Japanese, uh, but Dutch auction is more effective if you are going to negotiate with a single supplier. So, I mean, we don't have much time to discuss this, but yeah, how this is how it, 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 it really works. We can also uh, use our team, Microsoft Teams um, or Zoom to get into a discussion to a supplier very specifically uh, multiple room discussion simultaneously same time so again without a tool we can also create a time pressure on suppliers to get give us the right pricing now moving into responsiveness of the procurement we talk about analytics like for example that many of the companies i mean not everybody is using the 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 the, the uh, interactive tools for for calculation. Many of us are using Excel, for example, to get into that um, that business business cases. But this is an interactive tool. I mean, in some cases, it is, it is built in, in with the sourcing uh, platform or tendering platform. But in some cases, we can also use again AI help and uh, completely a different kind of um, tool. Uh, along with our tendering facilities. So this can sit with the tendering uh, platform uh, as an architecture, and it can actually give you very fast response. Like for example, you can get immediate business scenario, you can play with your scenario and it can happen the instantly. You can see after the, after the everybody, all the vendors are submitting their bid, sometimes we need to work out, we need to wait. But here, all details, line item level calculation can happen um, in in those cases in a in a uh, in very short time. I mean, sometimes immediately. Actually, we can give instant uh, access and instant uh, analysis of the situation. So, this is actually all about empowering buyers because uh, you need to empower buyers to take decision based on this quick analytics what they are doing so that it can happen um, immediately and it will optimize our sourcing decision and other agile uh, strong tools in, in place today. And the last one in my slide is all about supplier relationship management, how we can leverage supplier uh, relationship, how we can move from a customer of choice, you know? So that's very important that your supplier actually preferred you because today's situation is very, very uh, challenging. Today, we do not have material. I mean, I can. I, I don't know how many of you are facing the situation here, but globally we have huge shortage of paper. Forget about plastics; paper is the key now. We have huge shortage of duplex board. Um, people are really not able to produce. I can see every corner of this globe is impacted. So, be it in the US, be it in um, Europe, mature market is impacted more because most because uh, they have a capacity loss issue and they have a higher demand issue also, but uh, they have a huge gap of supply from Asia. And that is actually driving uh, this madness into the, into the system. Um, I mean, relatively Asia is still not impacted that hugely, but um, we can see that it is coming to us. And in the, in the recent past, in the last 10 days, actually, we have impact in Southeast Asia, we have impact in India, we have impact in China. So. I mean, if you are using Ivory Board, if you are using FBB, uh, you will be impacted heavily. So please be take care. So, um, I mean, this tool is all about how you can act proactively, how you can engage the suppliers. And currently, maybe we are using face-to-face -face meeting and everything, but uh, when you are using a tool, again, it gives us a 
uh, much better control. We can we can have full transparency. We can have value trackers. We have scoring dashboard, a real time communication using this tool. Uh, we can we can actually collaborate with the suppliers using this tool uh, pretty effectively and real time collaboration. Which I'm talking about, for example, that packaging every every time we have issues. So we have an online issue. We post here immediately. It reaches to the supplier. Supplier can assess it and get back to us immediately. So those kind of things are available here. Joint business development plans um, can can actually possible using this uh, tool, and it's really an effective tool again uh, to to leverage our uh, supply relationship. So this is my last uh, slides, uh, and uh, the now I can answer your question if there is anything. Thanks for listening. A great presentation and a very good morning, sir. This is Conan Shadi from uh, UAE. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, please. Thanks, Saidi. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, great presentation, sir. And as you rightly mentioned, pandemic has taught many lessons to us. And one of the lessons what we have learned is the environmental impact of logistics and supply chain activities. Would you like to know your thoughts, sir, about the Sorry, sustainable sir. supply chain practices? Thank you so much. Well, sustainability, sustainable supply chain practices. I mean, if I talk about that, it's a it's a huge subject, right? So, I mean, uh, when we talk about supply chain sustainability, we can talk about that uh, different directions. One is that uh, you know, how we can reduce plastics from from our from our value chain that is one of the measures that uh, we, we we can see from the from different uh, different organization that what measurement they are taking uh, all are talking about optimize your your weight of the bottle all are talking about uh, you know uses of pcr which is uh, which is uh, post consumer recyclable plastics um, many of us talking about using the biodegradable uh, biodegradable polymers kind of stuff so these are the things which is uh, currently getting into in, in, in the market. Uh, we all are uh, aware of other supply chain impact like the carbon footprint, for example. So when I talk about carbon footprint, uh, logistically, we need to be closer to our uh, factory. That means we are really talking about how we can uh, limit the vendor place closer to our factory. So uh, from, from that perspective, uh, from a supply chain uh, sustainability perspective, I think these are the measures which are, which are happening. People are moving towards FSC certification of in paper because, you know, people are talking about paper, but when I talk about paper, replacing plastics, we are talking about uh, cutting the trees and making paper. So we are ensuring using FSC certified paper uh, to confirm that where where the where the trees are getting cut, it will be replaced by 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 the organization or by the supplier. So these are the important measures, um, Saidi. What I can refer to. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Saswata, for your wonderful presentation. And it was really very informative session. I personally enjoyed it very much. And thank you so much for your time. And I'll ask the audience, that if they are having any questions, they can drop the questions in chat or in the QA session. OK? Thank you so sure, much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye. You too.